Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. We join you today from the North Central Research Station at Lahoma for the annual Wheat Field Day, which is one of the biggest days of the year for OSU Ag Research and Extension. There are lots of great topics to talk about today, including some information on the annual variety trials, which help producers make important decisions when it comes to selecting seed for next year's crop. We kick things off with SUNUP's Elizabeth Hokett and our OSU Extension West Area Agronomist, Josh Bouchong. We're here now at Lahoma with our West Area Agronomist, Josh Bouchong. So Josh, we're here in front of some variety trials that you and Amanda have been kind of keeping an eye on throughout the growing season. Tell us a little bit about these varieties. So the, the variety trials, uh, the small grains performance trials is the technical name, but the variety trials is a great way for us on the research side to really get to know these varieties, the, what characteristics we're looking for. So ideally we'd like to have a variety trial, you know, every 20 miles down the road, but that's just not feasible. So we have variety trials throughout the state. Dr. Silva's placed those critically on where we want to look at certain things. Uh, so here at Lahoma, we're more of grain system here. So we're looking at that. You got some other trials that we would look at if we're looking at like a dual purpose system like the El Reno variety trial as well as Walters. Uh, and then there's different areas of the state are your conventional till, no till. So there's different placements of the variety trials. And so when we're looking at those results, we're not just looking at what's the closest variety trial to that farmer, uh, but looking at what traits, what characteristics we're, are we wanting to look at and how those varieties are performing uh, in those different uh, scenarios. So not necessarily what variety trial is the closest, but uh, like I said, trying to learn what we can from those varieties in those different environments. Yeah, so what characteristics have you guys been seeing in these varieties this year? So we've been, had a full slate of uh, field days, just like usual, field days and field tours across the state. Uh, we're kind of seeing the tail end here. Uh, so Lahoma, we got a lot of plots to look at here. Uh, Lahoma is a, one location where we have two variety trials. Uh, so one of them, we have all 40 or 50 varieties here in the standard management. Uh, and then we also have those same varieties uh, replicated four times again in intensive management system. So with those varieties, we can see uh, like a 70 bushel yield goal versus a 100 bushel yield goal environment where we're putting on more fertilizer on intensive management, looking at seeding rates. So you can't really compare one variety trial to the next, but uh, looking at 60 pounds versus 1.2 million seeds per acre. So looking at those differences as well as more fertilizer with the 100 bushel yield environment for intensive management, as well as two shots of fungicide. And so historically, a few years ago, this variety trial was just the varieties with or without that flag leaf fungicide. So that's just one uh, scenario or one uh, factor of difference where you can really make those comparisons, but this is really two different systems. So if you're a low input producer, you might look at one variety trial. If you're one that's putting more inputs into your crop, more fertilizer, uh, you might look at the other one and see what those varieties, how they're responding to that uh, intensive management. And we've seen that in some varieties, it doesn't matter. Uh, name and point, showdown, high cotton, uh, we see those uh, all over the state performing well are planted early, planted late, dual purpose, planted early and grazed, uh, planted late, grain only. Uh, those two varieties as well as double stop uh, has been great for those dual purpose systems, but also in grain only systems. Uh, so we can see those varieties, some of them perform better with those fungicide applications. They might not have the disease package, uh, some, namely like the stripe press last year, which was pretty heavy and pretty early. Uh, so we saw varieties really uh, get uh, critiqued on that. Uh, but this year we're seeing some other issues and Dr. Aoun has been looking at that with the different leaf spotters uh, and seeing what the variety of responses are on those as well. But like I said, not necessarily when we're looking at the data for these, looking at the past data, but we always want to see more uh, trials out there, but keep in mind they're different systems. Yeah, so is there any specific varieties that you're seeing are better in different areas of the state? Uh, as we get further west, we can see drought and heat tolerance a lot better. Uh, Double Stop CL Plus, our clear field variety, has been namestay, been pretty consistent. It's been the number one seeded variety last four years. And that's a lot of the agronomics, not necessarily the herbicide trait, but a lot of those agronomics, the drought tolerance, like I said, even heat tolerance, recovery from grazing is a big one on it. Guys can graze it pretty heavy. And it's later first hollow stem. That's another one we're looking at those characteristics. When we're hitting first hollow stem, 
when we're hitting maturity at grain fill, uh, those aren't always the same. So some varieties like Gallagher, it's going to hit first all stem earlier in the spring. We get that data set. Well, if we really want that spring wheat pasture to graze, that might not be a variety we choose. But something like the double stop, where it's later at first tall stem, uh, we can get a little bit more fall pasture to graze in that scenario. So like I said, some of those like showdown and high cotton been pretty consistent throughout the whole region. And then some like uncharted, I particularly like it kind of more northwest, but also planted earlier. Uh, planted late sometimes, it doesn't quite fill in as much. Uh, but there's a lot of varieties like OK Corral, it's been doing great uh, in most scenarios, but there's just, like I said, different scenarios where certain characteristics are going to determine what we're wanting to grow. We always like to try to spread our risk, plant more than one variety on our farms. Ideally, we use different characteristics, but also different maturities, because in the spring, we never know what we're going to throw like this year. Coming out of March was very bleak, but then we got a lot of rain in April. So these later varieties might be able to get some more of those berries to fill out better, more so than those earlier varieties. So every year is different, but always hedging our bet, growing more than one variety on our farms is what we still like to preach. Yeah. So where can producers find these variety trial statistics at? So we have a county extension office in every county. If you want to go in person and talk to your county educator, they can find that resource for you and have the nice uh, printed out booklet. You can also find them online, uh, wheat.okstate.edu or sign up. All right. Well, thanks for catching up with us, Josh. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yep.